I'm Marjorie Hash and welcome to France 24's weekly music show that was I Want Your Dreams by this week's guest. He's a punk gentleman who in the late 70s had a hit with the band The Only Ones and the track Another Girl, Another Planet by the 80s. Rock and Roll's Dark Side got the better of him and he disappeared before making a roaring solo comeback in his glorious 60s with the album How the West Was Won. Two years later, the man whose music is often compared to Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground is back with a new record. Peter Perrett, thank you so much for joining us on the show this week. Thank you for inviting me. Now, your new album is called Human World and you're known for your Chung and Chung and cheek sense of humour. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this, the title? The title um, is describing a, a dystopian present, which um, back in my youth would have been an equivalent of Westworld. Um, and I saw a, an old poster for Westworld which said, where men and women are programmed to serve. And Back in the 70s, Westworld seemed like a sci-fi future that would never happen. It was just like a really scary film. And then when I woke up quite recently, I found myself in a world where the future had become Reality. more of a, a nightmare than anyone could have imagined. Oh. And, um, you know, it's amusing as well, but... Yeah, so that's a human world. That's why it's all one word rather than two separate words, because it's like a, the scariest horror film. Well, let's check out one of the tracks. This is Once Is Enough by Peter Perry. Taken from Human World, that's one of the tracks from Peter Perrett's new album. And to talk about it, well, we want to look at a lot of things in it. It's very interesting. I was listening to it a lot over the weekend. Um, and I felt, now this is my feeling from listening to it, that there's a lot of reference to our happiness and our dreams being commodities. And maybe because we live in a world where social media has been called out, I felt that maybe that was something you were touching on about the fact that, you know, we're sharing everything and everything, as soon as we share it, doesn't belong to us. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of social media. Yeah. I think it induces mental illness. And, uh, you know, the, that's the subject that some of my songs touch on. Um, the first song you played, I Want Your Dreams, that's about when reality becomes so out of focus that all you've got left are, are dreams and memories. Um, and retreating to those is a a safer escape than than other forms which you know you're going to talk about people later I think like your posthumous mm -hmm. piece um, that's a much more dangerous way of escaping you know music is the safest way of escaping I think mm. um, the second song you played once is enough luckily there's uh, many different kinds of love uh, on the first my first comeback album how the West was won, all the songs were about my, my wife, who I've been married to almost 50 years. But I sort of, um, I exhausted that, that subject matter on that album. I don't like repeating myself, so luckily all the love songs on the new album are about um, other females that I know that allow me to fantasize and, you know, without telling me to, to fuck off. You know. <laughs> So, um, talking of subject of love, um, since the last album, you've been touring with um, your family because your two sons are part of yeah. of the band, and one of their partners is also part of the band. So it's kind of a family affair now. Yeah, that's another yeah. kind of love that's been taken on the road and to the studio. Can you tell us a bit about that and how that's changed your your way of composing and being a musician? Um, well, it doesn't affect my way of composing, but it means that I see my kids. You know, because like if they weren't playing with me, I doubt if they'd want to see me. So it's like. Um, you know, it's a bonus. It, it helps me create the best music that I could create because I really think, you know, Jamie's a great guitarist, Peter's a great bass player. 
but also um, keeps me in touch with family and sometimes family is all you've got. Family and friends, but friends are few and far between, real friends. Yeah. But what's also interesting is that like, a lot of people would never have um, imagined you'd live past 27 because of the, the, the lifestyle you embrace and full rock and roll, um, mm. abuse of narcotics and, and so on. And, and yet you were back, you were here. Um, how does that feel? And how do you feel about this sort well, of rock I feel, and roll? I feel like a cockroach that has survived a nuclear war, you know. Um, you know I'm bruised and battered and, you know, barely functioning, but um, still capable of enjoying stuff and music is my greatest enjoyment so I'm grateful for the whoever it was that helped me survive them you know I don't believe in a higher power but um, in a strength maybe I don't know Great. Well, thank you. We're going to talk about something kind of interesting because, uh, as you probably know, in music news at the minute, well, posthumous albums, um, that's releasing albums or compilations of unfinished work or archives of dead artists is big business. Uh, this week sees the release of Originals, a 14-track compilation of Prince's work from before he hit fame big time. The album will be launched at a title party hosted by Jay-Z, who worked in compiling the tracks alongside Prince's estate. Uh, this record comes three years after the passing of the Purple One and will feature songs composed by Prince for the likes of Sheila E, Vanity Six, as well as covers such as Joni Mitchell's A Case of You. A new Avicii album is also out this week, and this comes just over a year after the electronic music dance musician uh, was found dead in Oman. Entitled Tim, his real name, the album features music the 28-year-old had started working on and was finished by uh, close collaborators such as Chris Martin from Coldplay. Now, the proceeds of the sales of this album will go to the Tim Bergline Foundation, which was set up to generate mental health awareness following the artist's suicide. He is one of the new tracks, Avicii and Tough Love. That was uh, one of the new tracks on Avicii's posthumous album. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to come in this week, uh, Peter Perrett. Um, you know this is big business um, to talk about, um, to have posthumous albums. Uh, how would you feel the day you pass away if someone starts to release your tracks and your, you know, that your unfinished work? Would you be happy about that? Uh, if it was unfinished, I'd, I'd be unhappy. I mean, there, but there's been loads of bootlegs that have been you know, not things I would have chosen to release. There's nothing you can do about it. If there's any posthumous releases, I hope they collaborate with my son, Jamie, because I know that he'd exercise quality control. I think that's important. You have to be surrounded by, by the right people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show uh, this week. Remember, Human World, Peter Perrett's new album is out and he's currently on a tour that's going to be taking him to Germany and Spain over the next fortnight. Uh, remember, you can check out all our uh, culture news on our website and there's also our Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. More France 24 news coming up in just a few minutes. But first, we'll round up the show with a track taken from the new album of London artist Pix. The record is called Small Mercies and is full of beautiful synth pop. She'll be playing Paris's Pop Up du Label on the 15th of June. Here's Pix with Andéane Condori. <laughs> Your needs are changing, and so is France24.com. With articles, reports, the latest international news, all our programmes available on replay, together with live broadcasting 
Intuitive, fast and available in four languages. France24.com